And hello there. We're back um, after a long break, um, but we are here to conclude the What is the Simulation series. Um, I left off uh, with a warning last time, um, just offering you all the opportunity to stop listening. Um, hopefully I've provided enough of a break um, for maybe for you to forget about this altogether because the information that I want to share with you, which incidentally is, is already displayed in the research files, but in discussing it with you verbally, um, it is a lot more direct and it leaves nothing up to the imagination. Um, but in bringing this up with you uh, today, we are going to be looking at um, the coding that underlies this matrix um, there are multiple facets to this coding. Um, some of you may be already able to simply raise your hands and say, well, you know, if we're talking about modern technology and where we're at today and how it has uh, shot through um, to affect the past, um, time doesn't exist in quantum, everything's all, always been happening all at once and the only reason that we are even able to perceptually experience this simulated universe is because of the technology we're using today. Um, therefore, you could raise your hand and say, well, it's the internet, it's HTML, it's all the earlier codings that went into creating the internet, it's... Um, a whole bunch of different variations of that and you would all be correct um, to a point. Yes, they all do play their part. The coding of this simulation, uh, the, the matrix that, that underpins this simulation and makes it spin, um, you know, with time included and GPS and all these other things, um, is able to be sourced at one point um, just like we were talking about you know if we had to unplug from all of this at what point would we turn it off where is the where is the hub where all of this is actually spinning uh, from um, and earlier we determined crazy as it may sound uh, Facebook um, nearly three billion users um, the Facebook app is the point that we need to unplug from um, filtering out from that social media itself uh, filtering out from that uh, smartphones um, all forms of mobile internet and all forms of broadcast media uh, we have saturated airwaves and every frequency is hitting us at the speed of light multiple frequencies at once affecting us at a genetic level affecting our sight our senses um, and creating what is a quantum mirage illusory universe. It is all a simulation. Um, so what we'd be doing is we'd be unplugging from all of that to get out of it. Um, point being, where is the singular point where the coding is humming along? of its own self, I mean, of, of its own accord, just, just by itself, where is it humming along? So what I want to put to you is a similar question. Instead of where would we have to turn it all off from, uh, what is something that we're all connected to, um, whether the internet exists or not? What, 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 are, we, what are we all connected to? Now... We can identify that simply by looking at our everyday lives. What is the one thing, the one, the one underlying machine that we are all connected to? What do we do with our daily lives? We have certain things that we need to take care of. We go out, earn money to survive. As we know, uh, we're being held hostage here. We have to pay uh, somebody if we want to survive, um, shocking as that is and will continue to be uh, for as long as it is the case. Um, there are other things that we have to do every day that we all have to do. Um, but that's pretty much the one that brings us all together under a singular umbrella um, being banks. 
Now, a very long time ago, I want to sort of introduce this section by just talking a little bit about where all of this started. Now, a long time ago, before uh, information technology, um, banks existed. I mean, you know, there were little banks in little towns and that's where you went to keep your money and etc etc and it all just sort of blossomed from there um but there came a point where the management of that system needed uh the application of technology that was being invented and tested and used um to be able to manage the data um flowing um accounts um population growth um making workloads easier for people who work at banks, administration, etc. And what happened um, in parallel to this um, is back in, uh, we, we had the 50s and the 60s in the United States and the Cold War, um, America felt that there was a threat from Russia and what needed to happen was a um, partnership between a technology company and the United States Department of Defense to implement machinery, equipment um, within the United States Department of Defense that was going to se- to help secure the country from potential attack and they needed to be able to see it before it was going to happen. Um, this resulted in a system called uh, SAGE, Semi-Automatic Ground Environment. And it was actually IBM, uh, one of their key components um, was used in the manufacturing um, and the putting together of this uh, system uh, through their military products division um, and they have been working in partnership with the White House ever since in in defence and in many other areas. Now, when this partnership started, there were also other things that were springing up from that around the same time as well and IBM also shipped to them a list actually Um, the system 360 which was essentially a mainframe um, for processing and they leased it at an exorbitant price Um, they've been fleecing the White House the whole time as has all big tech Um, nonetheless there was a particular coding that had to be released with system 360 um, to make it work and IBM threw uh, something at them called EBCDIC, which stands for Extended Binary Coded Decimal Interchange Code. And it is a coding that is used to turn one lot of information into another lot of information, the same information but in a different language. It enabled them to process information from one uh as I just said, one, one, one language to another language. Um, now, this particular coding um, ended up with System 360 as being the foundation of bank mainframes as well, yes. A military tool, uh, a military mainframe uh, being used as a bank mainframe. IBM then went on to uh, produce mainframes Um, for most of the world's major banks. That is still true today. Most of the world's major banks use the ascendance of System 360. Shocking, right? They're now called uh, Z Systems and they do have Z System for mobile. They actually have their app, have a a mobile banking app. So long story short, this coding, EBCDIC, Extended Binary Coded Decimal Interchange Code, um, has been there the whole time um, in the air, uh, through the airwaves, um, as a result of the what we have come to know as the Z-Systems app. 
but shoots back to its origins as being something that was released with System 360. And there's the connection with the United States Department of Defense. So where what we need to keep in mind here is <clears throat> what we discussed about time being vertical, toroidal, um, and everything happening at once, just so we don't get confused about, yeah, but that was then and this is now and yada, yada. None of that's relevant. We have to be looking at time as a whole. We have to be looking at time as simultaneous, past, present, future, simultaneous. We are strung up on frequencies. Within those frequencies, data is being sent through those frequencies and underneath all of it is bank mainframe coding. And the main culprits are IBM. EBCDIC, Extended Binary Coded Decimal Interchange Code, still in use today. Now, when I brought this subject up online, uh, with fair, uh, I have to be fair, with people who wouldn't really know the difference, um, of course, the impetus online is to sort of argue with everything that, that's presented to you so that, you know, you can feel that you're um, being a good challenger even if it's wasting time and you're not really interested in learning anything. So that's what I came up against. Um, people were saying, yeah, but but that they're not using System 360 anymore. I was like, well, ABCDIC is still being used today, so what's the difference? And also that's irrelevant because it's all happening at once. So that's what we're, that's what we're looking at. That's what we're looking at essentially. And you will have noticed through the video files that I have referred to um, ABCDIC many, 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 many times uh, to show you the coding and how events that are taking place in our world um, all link back to this coding and how the numeric, alphanumeric system that we use online uh, for information technology is uh, lining up uh, with this with this coding um, and detonating uh, for what is called GPX fusion um, global peering exchange is the original term GPX not S GPX global peering exchange um, and it has been you know uh, morphed and evolved into GPS so Automatically, we get our GPS um, linking with the GPX in AP, EBCDIC, which is online. It, it's right there. It's in the air all the time. And it's also humming along in the background in all the, uh, the bank, main, bank, bank mainframes all over the world. So there we have it, you know, <laughs> mobile banking, not for me. No, thank you. Um, smartphones, not for me. No, thank you. Um, social media not for me no thank you um the I, I feel but once we combine all these things together we're really asking for it because they are military tools and here's the thing the coding's wrong the coding does not sit in alignment with uh anything natural in our world even though it's a simulation there are natural laws uh, that that hold this thing together. There is a combination of artificial and natural. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to have life in a, in a simulation if these things weren't combined. So the coding in not being natural is uh, actually a violation. And when, when we're talking about how to, to determine that, we have to look at where we started with these this this series in talking about our senses and our brain and the magnetic field that our heart generates there are certain magnetic principles um, that must apply for a living system to function harmoniously the ebcdic um, the information technology and all its coding simply does not align with that requirement it is an attack and a violation on what it is that we need to function harmoniously it's an attack and a violation on our heart it's an attack and a violation on our brain it's an attack and a violation on our senses and if you look further into uh, the study of how we 
interpret the world around us, there is a very heavy focus on the fact that the mind interprets numbers once it's been trained. The, ner- the, the mind interprets numbers uh, to be able to perceive the external world. So when we have a particular malicious code, a virus actually, that IBM has uh, served us uh, in the airwaves the whole time, um, not being aligned, uh, what happens is we experience um, something else. We're no longer experiencing a natural magnetic reality. We're experiencing an artificial uh, attack on reality which results in a quantum mirage that is being pulled together in such a way that we perceptually experience and interpret an illusion. Sadly, when we have an instance of GPX fusion, what happens is this malicious virus fuses with the physical realm that we have come to understand and experience as being a reality for us sadly within a simulation it fuses with it and therefore what is online happens offline it's a very direct fusion between the online world and the physical world between what everything that's happening in broadcast frequencies mobile with land-based reality and it's a bit like uh, a head-on collision um, of information and data, magnetics being attacked by something, but fusing at a certain point, which creates, in many instances, um, a flash of light. Yeah, it's very sci-fi. Boom, there's your flash of light and suddenly life as we know it has now been hijacked by the internet mobile internet um, and everything else and it's all going to spin together and produce oh look two airplanes going into the trade world trade center towers Um, that's just one example of uh, broadcasts uh, broadcast media and um, the internet and telecommunications fusing and bank mainframes and military <laughs> military equipment and si- simulated um, nonsense that they were that they were they were doing on that day all combining and fusing with the data that was behind the land based operations that were occurring that day land based operations were well air traffic control. Um, all the data that goes into, you know, people getting on planes and being able to get on a plane and fly somewhere. All of this sort of stuff is all is all computer based and all automated and all run by, well, mostly IBM, um, uh, Sabre, uh, online book, the, the booking system that they have, it's, it's all IBM. Um, IBM also did the 911 systems in New York. And uh, this is my next point. Once we get a fusion... Um, between uh, the malicious virus that is spinning uh, through the air in multiple ways with land-based reality, there is the way that this happens is because the data matches, the data aligns. There's a, there's a central code that that has to click in. It's a bit like unlocking uh, a safe Um, it's a bit like safe cracking once you get the combination right click it opens and this is what happens at the point of gpx fusion so you know in terms of 911 that's that's the an- that's the real answer that's why a lot of people thought that it was um all computer graphics that's why they thought it was a hologram that's why they thought it was an inside job um well it definitely was except nobody on the inside knew what the hell happened it was in the machines um it was in the coding it was in the way they put the whole thing together and then put everything online 
um, as well as you know, millions and millions and millions of televisions turned on to watch morning television in America and radio stations and, I mean, the whole place is just buzzing with um, airborne information. So that's how it comes together and that's one instance I'm going to talk about 911. Uh, it, it is irrefutable. It is basic science. It is maths. It is fact. Um, and to any of you that have been following this information so far and hearing me say that, it should be very easy for you to actually understand and believe what I'm saying because none of what I've said does not make perfect sense. Everything that I've said to you so far is very easy to understand and makes perfect sense. If you add A and B, you get AB. It might become C, right? So C is A plus B, yeah? Now you can see where there's layers and that's why it can be difficult to find the, the source of the problem because it appears in a different form at every level. So... That's 911 and exactly what happened. I don't know if the FBI have been made aware, but I do know that at some point IBM were probably aware. They did the 911 systems in New York and EBCDIC is based on a 911 system. At the very centermost point of the grid for EBCDIC is the number 119. Now, I don't care whether you're in the Southern Hemisphere or the Northern Hemisphere, that's September 11 or... It's November 9, which incidentally was the 2016 election. Fascinating stuff. I'm not going to get into that right now. But they did the 911 systems in New York. So you get an airborne system where everything's pulling uh, towards New York. You get you get airplanes that are being hijacked and coming out of Boston, <clears throat> flying, flying to LA and wherever else, and they, they get pulled. They're all, they, they go off radar. They lost them. They lost radio contact, and the the uh, the cockpit recording that came through that wasn't from the airplanes. <laughs> that wasn't from those airplanes. That that's from from back in the days of uh, Sabina hijackings in Dawson's Field in Israel. We have some planes. Look it up, Dawson's Field. There were terrorists over there who hijacked a bunch of Israeli jets and. And took them all back to the airport. There was a hostage situation. They had to get them out of there. I think um, Netanyahu, back when he was a young man, he actually got shot on one occasion trying to get hostages and fight terrorists on a friggin' airplane. It's that data. It is actually that data. And if you look at the data, it matches up with Boeing 767s and a whole bunch of other things, dates, times, and all the rest of it. But more importantly, it actually syncs up with ABCDIC. The 911 system in New York. They actually programmed it. They actually worked on this thing, IBM. So there they are in New York with a 911 system. There they are in banks with System 360. And there they are in the United States military, the United States Department of Defense with SAGE and, and, and everything else that they've been furbishing them with since they started they're also all over the world they do deals with Saudi Arabia they were even in Afghanistan I mean IBM do what they please they don't care who's at war with anybody else they sell the equipment to both sides they're the puppets they're the ones who are supplying this stuff and you can put your hand up and say yeah but what about the arms dealers sorry the arms dealers are like part of the simulation they're puppets what's running them what's running the way their minds work is the coding that IBM used way back in the beginning because that's the first stuff that went shooting through the air it's the first interference circuit that went shooting through the air you know then we had you know Morse code and everything was before them but we're looking at systems that have all come together and aligned in such a way is that System 360 and the ABCDIC coding were kind of like, you know, the icing on the cake that needed to happen for all of this stuff to fuse with land-based reality. And that's what we saw happen on 911. It's a sim that's a simple matter of, th that that's a fact. 
Um, they also do uh, they do uh, cockpit um, cockpit equipment the way aeroplane cockpits work and you know sorry my language on all that sort of stuff I don't know the terminology but they're everywhere they're everywhere that you look is IBM if I go to this if the supermarket and I look at the girl behind the checkout and the, and the monitor that she's staring at you know the screen that she's staring at and I look down and who's it from it's the IBM monitor they are everywhere they're not just some old company that people have forgotten about. They've always been cutting edge. They haven't always been in good favour with the White House. White, the White House has gone other places many times in, in, instead of always getting their stuff from IBM. But they're still in the White House. They're underneath all of it. IBM did the moon landing. I mean, they worked on they worked on all of that. They helped with the technology to pull all of that together. They are in everything absolutely everything and if you go and watch a space odyssey stanley kubrick and you look at that monolith now pull open a photo of z systems the mainframe and people have their ideas online you know about kubrick and what he may have known and what 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 was you know i mean he actually he actually communicated with ibm when he was making that film he communicated when with them when he was making that film he said he he, he wanted to make a film about a um a, a, a psycho a psychotic computer called hal but he didn't want to sort of offend ibm um and he wanted he wanted um some assurance from them that it was okay for him to go ahead with this project Look it up online. His letter's right there. He typed it to them, to them himself. So there's all of this, this, these ways that this information can be traced and you've really just got to know where to look for it. I found it. Um, now, in saying it, that they ran the 911 systems in New York and EBCDIC is a 911 system as well with very set numbers for GPX that need to be matched to unlock that safe and to create GPX fusion. We have to understand that what they've essentially created for us to live in is a 911 grid. Every other second is an emergency. Every bad thing that happens is because of them. You know, the reason people are difficult to reason with is because brains have been reprogrammed uh, by information technology that is not programmed <laughs> the right way. It's not in harmony with how we need to be able to function and our minds, our, our circuitry in the brain needs to be able to work to reach our full potential. So what they've done is they've attacked us, uh, made us dumb, and then they step forward and go, well, we've got a solution for that, artificial intelligence. Well, artificial intelligence based on malicious code is just going to keep creating more maliciousness or a completely fake version of peace where there are no living souls on earth anymore. There's merely zombies, um, you know, humming along to their smartphones as automated humans and nobody's alive anymore. Everything's just a fraudulent joke, uh, a quantum mirage. Um, I think many of us are already feeling it. We go outside and with the way the world has turned for the last couple of years, um, thanks to them as well, we have, you know, biological warfare happening because they still can't even figure out how online data to do with diseases could possibly fuse with land-based reality and create an epidemic. I mean, I'm sorry, but I, I find it very difficult to have any respect for them. I've tried addressing them through these podcasts intelligently. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't, I'm not really convinced that they're open a hundred percent to changing anything that they're doing. Um, it's, it's not looking good. <laughs> so, so there we have it. It's EBCDIC, bank mainframes, IBM, and, uh, everything else that I just mentioned then. And if you want to find that coding, you can find it on Wikipedia. I mean, it's been there all along. Um, what they've done though is they've since edited it 
um, since 2016. What you need to be looking at is the unedited version from Wikipedia in 2016, which is what I have, and it's in the files. I'm going to try and make that available to you in um, printable format uh, so that you can grab it and download it for yourselves and keep it. Um, and I'm hoping to include it as a diagram in a book that I'm trying to pull together about all of this as well. But they did edit it. Um, Wikipedia said they edited it uh, to make it non-location specific. Um, so the the bulk of it is there, but they've taken out smaller numbers um, in each uh, command, um, as they said, to make it non-location specific. But in doing that, they've they've hidden evidence. Um, Wikipedia 2016. EBCDIC, it might be on the internet archive. You might be able to find it there. Um, that's what you need to be looking for and you'll be able to find the GPX. Um, it's underneath the 119 and you'll see that there are certain numbers that are allocated to GPX. Now, if you turn that grid into a pyramid by you know pushing the 119 up to the tip of the pyramid and the other sides come down to form a uh, you know, pyramidal structure, um, and you turn that into a 3D image, well, that 3D image uh, becomes the Great Pyramid of Giza. It is the engineering for the Great Pyramid of Giza. And it's where social media comes in. And the Great Pyramid of Giza being, you know, as it played out in time, or looks to be a salt mine, uh, some description. Um, this coding, this engineering is actually... Um, what's being spun through the air now as we speak as artificial intelligence where the glands in the brain are being impacted, the thalamus, the eye of Horus, um, the pituitary gland, the pineal gland and uh, optic nerve um, grand gallery are uh, being impacted by artificial intelligence and suddenly we're seeing something totally different to where we would otherwise be uh, as human beings. Um, we're very much in a perceptual prison. It's, 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 kind, of, it's kind of tragic. Uh, it's not even kind of tragic. It's just straight tragic. It's very difficult to know this information and, and, and still try and go out and enjoy life or maintain some good mental health or good physical health. Um, just living in cities now has become so completely fatiguing with everything that's going on. A lot of people are moving to the country um, just to get away from it all because it's all too much um, and they don't understand, you know, re I mean, there's surface reasons because of the biological warfare that's happening thanks to social media and mobile internet. Um, but the human being is, uh, is uh, under pressure here we're under pressure and, and the guys at the top just really want to secure their automated economy. They don't really care who dies. There's more people being born every day. Why should they worry? Um, so there it is, ABCDIC System 360, mainframes and banks um, and their connections with the United States Department of Defense. Um, and in terms of 911, um, aircraft equipment now further to that we have uh, space itself um, we can look at Google Earth for that simulation it's all numbers it's all GPS it's all lined up and ready to go and uh, there it is projecting itself in such a way as that we visually perceive a uh, planet and other planets and stars and all sorts of stuff now i can i can start saying crazy things to you like each each star is a website or an ip address and i'd be right um but i think at this point with the information that i've given you i'm going to leave it with you to find out why i'd be right um there is one other aspect to all of this that needs to be mentioned and that is a, um, a social media uh, project that was launched by a group of Microsoft um, 
network scientists and data miners through CodePlex, which was a Microsoft um, project platform that has since um, been closed. But it was originally launched through CodePlex and it was re released by the Social Media Research Foundation. Ben Schneiderman and Mark Smith um, worked on um, software called Node XL and it enabled uh, data miners to data mine social media um, to get insights into what people were saying about the products um, that they were advertising and wanting to sell through social media. And <clears throat> they have a, a, a website where their data mining graphs are published every day and it's called nodexlgraphgallery.org. That's nodexlgraphgallery.org. Um, if you go into one of these graphs, you'll see um, very quickly um, how it is that we are perceived as human beings, mm, not much bigger than ants. And um, there are, in every graph um, profile, uh, links to social media accounts <clears throat> where we have long lists of um, embedded links to people's social media profiles. So you get a Twitter profile of Sam Banks, for example, and they are linking from their website directly to her profile. Um, because she has participated in something unknowingly. She's been actually data mined as having um, spoken about um, something that they wanted to data mine. And her information comes up, her posts, sorry, her posts come up um, as part of this graph and what she said about this particular thing. And that happens for um, 20 to 30, 40 different people in each graph. And they are all linked um, to the nodexelgraphgallery.org website internally. Now, each graph has um, its own number. And when you open the graph, you'll see that there are other numbers that are um, allocated to words. Uh, words that have come up in um, the posts that people make that they have data mined. Um, as being relevant terms. So overall, when you look at these graphs, um, you'll notice that there is a um, really bizarre uh, approach to uh, social media users and the content that they provide to social media every day, their intellectual property through discussion and debate coming online to air their views and in the background we have um, the Social Media Research Foundation and people who have bought the Node XL software, um, data mining them without their knowledge. But Node XL um, connected action is their, their broader um, actual sort of like a company name. They're called Connected Action. Um, they publish these graphs on the node, node Excel, graphgallery.org website. And in publishing the graphs, <clears throat> what they're doing, especially with um, deep links in them, is they're producing a, um, oh goodness, what's the word? They're producing uh, a, 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 a Trojan, um, like a virus every time that they upload a new graph. They're, they're, remixing um, content from social media and recoding it and then dumping it back into the system by publishing it so that everything that's represented in those graphs and all the words and all the posts are spun into a different script. It all comes out the other end as a different script that's being created. Um, by the by, the words and the posts that are being used, and they are all then redirected to other content, uh, other users' profiles online, whose digital ID matches 
the graph number. So where the actual graph number becomes the redirector of everything that's within the graph information is then sent back through the system through it's been published to anybody's data um, digital ID including social media account numbers that match the graph number so it's a simple redirection of information and through internally people who match with that data um, sorry match with the graph number um, are going to receive um, direct interference in their experience of reality within the social media portal system. Sounds a little confusing, right? It's not once you look at it. Go in, open up a graph, look at the number at the top, look at everything in front of you, the picture, then all the words, the big the list, all the hashtags, all the numbers. Click on any number of those, it'll take you straight to a Twitter post. All of that information is now being redirected to the number of the graph. So if it's the number one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and my Facebook account number is 12345 or 54235 or 21325 or 42315. I am going to subconsciously receive the content that's in that graph as it will be scripted by the time it reaches me through the system in the way that internal coding affects these things. And how by some form of magic no we have to go back and listen to some of the earlier podcasts and remember that all this stuff is in the air in binary data and it's all impacting us at imperceptible levels the way we perceive reality our, our thoughts our feelings um, movements every day being impacted by what a single data mining site is doing i mean social media itself is bad enough but when you have an actual website that exists that is taking social media content and redirecting it and recoding it and creating a new script, what do we get? We get terrorist attacks. We get mass shootings. We get crime. We get murder. We get rape. We get um, plenty of good things that happen too because not all of the content's bad. <laughs> um, but the, the point being... Uh, a lot of it is. A lot of it's toxic. Um, a lot of it's mind-numbing. A lot of it is enough to drive somebody crazy. A lot of it is enough to make somebody sit there one day and think, oh, I, I don't know why, but I suddenly feel like going and doing this to myself. And, um, you know, only for some shrink to come along later and say, oh, yes, well, it was because you have underlying depression. And it, Actually, no, no, it's because they've got a Facebook account and a smartphone and the Social Media Research Foundation via Connected Action are in the background um, republishing uh, social media content back through the system to impact that person's mind in that particular way at that particular time because their phone number and social media account numbers line up with the data that's in those graphs. And that's when we get a GPX fusion. <laughs> that's what the fusion is. It's when we get a lining up, a matchment, a matching of data, of our identifying factors, our digital IDs, our identifiers matching up, our phone numbers, our addresses, our date of birth, our social account numbers matching online content that has been alphanumerically coded under certain umbrellas and headings, URLs. Yeah, that's the matrix. What's the guy's name? You ready for a laugh? His name's Mark Smith. He's the director. Ben Schneiderman helped engineer the whole thing. But Mark Smith is actually the director of this thing. He goes around and speaks in universities and at, at, um, at uh, you know, corporate events to, try to sell this software to people. Now, Smith, yes, S-M-I-T-H, Agent Smith, hello. That's the guy. He even wears the same sunglasses. It's ridiculous. And if you listen to him speak, he sounds like Jeff Goldblum. 
I mean, the guy's so psyoped, it's ridiculous. He doesn't even understand why he talks the way he does. He's basically Jeff Goldblum. God bless Jeff Goldblum. Nobody hates Jeff Goldblum. Everybody loves Jeff Goldblum. But this guy, Mark Smith, he's very proud of himself. He's proud of what he does. Uh, he's very smug about it too. Um, he, he feels he feels like he's really onto something that he can sit there and spy on some of the world's finest human beings without them knowing. Mm. Think about all the people that are on social media who have achieved incredible things in life that he will never. And he sits there smugly grinning while he data mines them and they have no idea. They have no idea. He feels so powerful. Anyway, I could go on. Um, I've actually avoided going to that website for a long time because I find it so traumatizing to look at when you re- when you really understand what's being done. It's absolutely shocking. It's reprehensible. The, it is the equivalent of sticking humans in vats in an underground military base and trying to make them grow five heads or, you know, fish scales. Um human experimentation um data mining people as as an experiment and all of this sort of thing just in interfering with the way we think the way we feel and you know they're probably nice people they're probably really nice people they're just ignorant because they don't understand what mobile internet is they don't understand what saturation of frequencies is they don't understand how all of these things impact a single living organisms such as a human being with a brain that is far superior with a heart that is far superior to any artificial construct that any of them could possibly invent ever we will always be the superior creature the superior invention to artificial intelligence artificial intelligence which is what all of this is a simulation all because of artificial intelligence there will never ever 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 be a time where artificial intelligence is superior to what a single human being in his natural state can do never Because what artificial intelligence does not have is a connection to life. It's completely artificial. It does not have a connection to life. The only connection it has to life is through us and the attention that we give it. When it interpenetrates us and our biofield and our magnetic field, that's when it takes on, you know, quote unquote, a life of its own. But it's completely artificial. So there it is. Um, To sum it up for you, banks, mobile banking, ABCDIC, System 360, IBM, Wikipedia, 2016, Sage, semi-automatic ground environment, 911, uh, that was IBM's fault. They were in partnership with the Kamai. Um, The White House. (laughs) the white house you want to talk about rothschilds and red federal reserve and all the rest of it well you can go for your life but all these people are humming along to the tune of abc the ic system 360 ibm they're humming along to the tune of the technology that pulls it all together the technology is what's doing the controlling here and when we have a coding that is bad that is wrong that is full of mistakes you're going to get a world that is bad, wrong, full of mistakes, and you're going to get people who are bad, wrong, and make a lot of mistakes. And that's where we're at. It is a quantum mirage. It happens as a result of GBX fusion between, uh, you know, broadcast media, um, airborne information, and land-based reality. And um, we also have a uh, uh, an attack vector known as nodexlgraphgallery.org, uh, which is being used to promote data mining software by Connected Action um, through the Social Media Research Foundation, which is a Microsoft project, um, attacking everybody on social media and um, creating awful things to happen. 
so there it is um i hope that uh that that this series has given you um at least some kind of insight into what we're dealing with here and 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 I'm sorry for f- firing all that off a bit like a machine gun this morning we've been on a long break and i guess i really needed to get all that off my chest um but there's the long and the short of it um there's the ups and the downs of it there are a lot more uh, mysteries to this um that i have um uncovered in the evidence files um that I won't touch on in this particular podcast. I will be here for another three days. Um, but I do invite you um, to investigate for yourselves. I do invite you to have a look at the evidence for yourselves and come to your own conclusions. But, um, yeah, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask and I'll answer them. Um, and uh, really I think the next step for us is to is to understand that this is all knowledge. None of this is inno- innocent. And this is all knowledge it's all technically evil in the last podcast i talked to you about old stories you know the garden of eden um don't do it eve don't do it don't don't become self-aware don't don't partake of the tree of knowledge don't eat that fruit or you'll lose your innocence um but here we are uh and you know they've been trying to take our innocence from us um since birth and uh, we get to a point where unfortunately we have to look at their tree of knowledge in this particular light and see it for what it really is so that we can know that what we're not and what we don't want to be um, and we also know who the enemy is and sadly there is a, there actually is one um, of course we all have our own we all have our own problems we all have our own enemy within but you know the real enemy within is uh the one we can't see and it's right there in the airwaves thanks to these people i want to thank you all very much um, for bearing with me through these podcasts um sometimes i've taken a very long time to get a simple thing off my chest and other times i've um shot information at you at the speed of light and i want to thank you very much for listening and bearing with me um on through all of it um i had never anticipated that i would end up uh doing a series of podcasts on this topic with me speaking i was very happy to just leave the evidence as it is as screenshot evidence files but i am glad that i took the opportunity to do this um i'm in the middle of trying to uh uh working with with a good uh with a good friend um on transcribing all of these podcasts and hopefully be able to release them as a book um that will be available to you at some point in the future until then, please take care. Um, I hope that you consider everything that I've said with the utmost seriousness and once again, uh, look into it for yourselves. It is possible to understand it. It's not that difficult. And once you see it, you can't unsee it. But please do make a little time for yourselves every day to enjoy what there is of life that is there to be enjoyed. Um, and it's each other at the end of the day beautiful nature and each other and the love that we can share to hopefully uh, pull through this um, with enough strength to confront the people who are responsible for our imprisonment who are responsible for creating a simulated universe um, who are responsible for plunging human existence into hell on earth they must be confronted and I think that um, once we have been empowered with the knowledge that we need in order to do that, they can be confronted. Thank you very much.